Hey everyone, today I wanted to go over some updates from Playground AI only because there's been a lot of changes from the last video I made. So here we are on Playground AI's main homepage, which is their gallery. And the first thing I want to show you is this search function here. You can search for any style or any type of picture. Let's say I wanted to find images that were made with armor in the prompt. It's going to bring up all these images with various armor. Another change to the site is the pricing model. If we go into the pricing options here, you can see now that Dolly 2 is a separate $10 a month subscription. And you also have an option to go beyond the 800 images per month. In terms of what's new for creating images, on the very left here under the prompt box, you're going to see remove from image. This is known as negative prompting, and this helps minimize things like double heads, double arms, morbid results. We'll take a look at that in more detail in a second. In the previous video as well, there were limited image dimensions, but they've added additional ones for the free membership. Now if we go to the model section here, you're going to see that there is Stable Diffusion 2.1. I'm going to cover this in a separate video. Stable Diffusion 2 is a little different. It's starting to mature and it really takes advantage of negative prompts. I highly encourage you though to stick to 1.5 until you get the hang of prompting. In my opinion, 1.5 is still more versatile, a bit easier to use than 2.1. Now, one of the most recent updates, there are 12 new filters that they've added. If we go into the filter section here and we click on the drop down, you're going to see from delicate detail on, we have new filters here color pop, Playtoon, Woolitize, Retro Anime, and we'll look at a few of these right now. So I selected Playtoon here. And just underneath, you'll see a little tip. It says use a character or a person at the beginning of your prompt. In this case, we're going to do something fairly simple, like a, a Disney princess. When you start experimenting with these filters, I encourage you to start simple first. In terms of the settings, I'm using 512 by 768, prompt guidance at 7, and quality and details at 50. We could probably lower this to 35 for now. I believe that's the default setting the model's trained on. In the advanced options, I'm going to change this to Euler Ancestral. I used to say Euler. I found out recently it's actually Euler. I like Euler because it sounds like Bueller. Bueller. Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> Anyway, let's run four images, make sure private's clicked on, and we're just going to go ahead and click generate. What's also new is this column feature. If you slide it to the right, you now have the ability to change how many columns you see on the workspace. So that's pretty handy. And here we have the generated images. They're kind of goofy looking, to be honest, because it's a very simple prompt, but you see the style of it. If we hover one of the images, you see it's got the Playtoon style prompt, Disney Princess, which we typed in, and then the rest of the prompt is associated with the Playtoon filter. So you could even copy and paste this and tweak it later. If you want to change the eyes, for example, if you didn't want it so round, you could take that out or add something else in. The other new feature they have is rate image. So if I liked the result of this, I can rate it for love, rate it as okay, or dislike it. And this helps with analytics for the developers to see what people are liking in terms of the filters and the results and things like that. Now, I'll be honest with you, the results are a little underwhelming. And one of the reasons why you see that is because there's no negative prompts in here. So we're going to switch on remove from image. I've already copied a list that I normally use for people. I'll leave a Google Drive link where you can copy and paste this on your own. It's a shared doc, so you could even just save the link. So I'm going to enter that in here, leave everything else, and we're going to generate another four images. And I can guarantee you the results are going to be much better than what we saw earlier. And here are the generated image. You see we get much better looking results. This one's a little too close for me, but it has nice details on it. Then we have a couple up here. This one turned out pretty good. This one as well. I can run this a few times to get better details. Let's take a look at this Woolitize one. This one basically just gives the image a look as if it was made out of wool, and it looks really cool. It's a very fun and playful filter. 
Now, as you can see the results here, here are the top two. Oh, this one looks really nice, but you can see it's got this wool-like material on it, right? It looks really fun. And there's the results of the other two images. Personally, for me, I'm mainly a people photographer, and I've been really loving the analog and Polaroid filters. So I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to show you a quick example of how I've been using this particular filter. And I want to also show you the benefits of using negative prompts. In the prompt area, I pasted this prompt that I've been experimenting with. I'll leave it in the description below if you want to try it for yourself. I'm also going to leave the negative prompt area blank for now. And we're going to choose the Polaroid filter. For prompt guidance, I'll leave it at 7, quality and details at 50. For the sampling method, we're going to use DPM2. So we're going to go ahead and click Generate and see the results we get. Okay, as we look at these top two images, it has that Polaroid feel, that vintage look. It's a Filipino woman, but it's not exactly <laughs> the results I was looking for. I can run this again and I'm going to get very similar results. But now what we're going to do is enter in negative prompts in here, and then we're going to generate four more images. Just know with DPM2, it typically takes a bit longer to render the images than something like DDIM or oil. So here are the four rendered images. As you can see, a world of difference adding negative prompts. Although these two can use some work, I mean the limbs here, negative prompts is not going to eliminate the deformities, but it does help minimize it. You'll also notice the swirly bouquet here in the background, as well as in this one. If you watch my previous video on stable diffusion using photography prompts, I kind of go over this in a bit more detail. But as you can see, adding the lens Helios 44-2 58mm gives you this type of result. Make sure you check out that video. Here's a few that I've done with the Polaroid style filter. Similar prompts, I get very realistic looking images in sort of a vintage style that I personally like. I also did a hippie style that came out really nice. I love the details here. The eyes especially might need a bit toning down, but the skin texture, the slight smile. One thing I like about stable diffusion, the human emotions are more realistic than in mid-journey. Mid-journey tends to have kind of some dead looking expressions, <laughs> but you can always put it in the prompt. Here's another image I really liked using the analog style filter. Similar prompt as well. This image was using the color pop filter and I was trying to do a Cirque du Soleil type of look and it came out great, very colorful. Some very unique details as well. But overall, this is another filter that I enjoy using quite a bit. I also used the Polaroid style to recreate Cleopatra, kind of a modern day look. And here's another example of a Dark Angel themed image using the Polaroid style. The other thing I wanted to point out too is that when you look at images within the gallery, not only can you see the prompt, the negative prompts, you can copy and remix. You also have all the information about that image. Now there's also a section below that shows you similar images that may inspire other ideals for your prompts. Now that you're up to speed on Playground AI, just know that there's still a fairly new company trying to work out the kinks. I personally love the new filters and the fact that you can do in-painting. Pretty much most of the stable diffusion options are available, except for out-painting. I would think that's high on their list because a lot of people love using out-painting, and I think it would take Playground AI to the next level. So I think it's obvious there are a lot of you that love using stable diffusion so let me know in the comments below what kind of content you want to see and if you happen to be new to stable diffusion and playground ai make sure to check out this video or this video to get started on using stable diffusion in the meantime my friends as always until the next video i'll see you when i see you